This is Eric Sloof and I'm at the VMware booth. I'm joined by Mike Foley. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great, Eric. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. So, you are at the technology preview booth. We are looking at vSphere 6. We are allowed to say it now. Yes, we are. So, it's a technology preview, so it's still in beta, or is it beta? It, here in the States, it's beta. Okay, it's beta. <laughs> so, this new version contains a lot of cool new features, but if what people are want to give it a try and want to try it out. They are allowed to download it? Yes, so uh, today we have a, a, an open program for vSphere Beta for v version 6. You can download it. It's still under NDA, but you know you can download it and you can go through all the different features that are, that are coming out. So you will get the license keys, you will get the ESXi, you will get Virtual Center, the complete stack, and you can yep. install it on a white box or on a, on a test system? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that there's, uh, you, you can go through and, and try out everything run into a, a problem. Do you Can you get support through the community? Is, is there content available which will guide you through this new version? Yes, yeah, so there's community support for all this beta and a lot of the beta engineers are monitoring that and answering questions as they go. Okay, so the URL is VMTN vSphere Beta. Right. People have to look it up and they can sign up for this new version. So let's take a look at some of the highlights of this sure. new version. Sure, we can do that. So. First, we're going to talk about the vCenter content library. If, for those of you that are familiar with vCloud Director, it had a content library where you could lo upload objects and those would be synced across multiple vClouds. For vCenter, the same thing happened. So now I can upload virtual appliances, scripts, ISO files, all those sorts of things, and those will get pushed out from a central location out to all your other vCenters. So it, that's great for uh, a main site and then being able to push stuff out to a remote site. So it will be replicated automatically, Correct. and is there also a structure in there that you can hide certain files for certain users, or? That that might be beyond where I've played around with version six, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess download the beta and we'll find out. Right, right, so that's a great idea. Put ISOs in there, put scripts in there, yes. and all your, all your administrators have access to the same set of Right, uh, so, files. So now you don't have, uh, you know, say a copy of Windows 2012 template from, you know, th there's four different templates across your whole enterprise, it's one template. Cool, 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 cool. Next feature. So vMotion enhancement. This is really, really interesting to a lot of people. Uh, I've been talking about this at the show since Sunday night. It's a, it's a lot of fun. So we're talking about cross vSwitch vMotion, and these all build upon each other. So cross v switch vMotion allows you to move a VM from host A to host B, and select the port group destination, which may be a different switch. Oh, that's pretty cool, because in the early days, you were bound to just the same, the same network, yeah. and now you can jump to another network, another port group sure. on the destination host. Sure, and then the next one is cross vCenter. So now I could say move uh, a vMotion of VM from one vCenter instance to the next vCenter instance. So maybe from test, test and dev, into production or, or, or into some other instance of vCenter. And are you bound to things like the same storage, the same the volumes, the same network, or is it completely loose? It, it's completely loose. You're, you're in control, you can move to a different port group, to different storage, so forth. I believe even uh, in, a, in, a, in a long distance in cross vCenter, that actually is a storage vMotion that gets pushed over as well. The memory state of the virtual machine is maintained, even though you're going Correct. to another home. Live, cool, cool, great, great. That's that's pretty awesome, isn't yeah. it? So there's and then, so we have those two really cool technologies that then build upon long distance vMotion, right? So long distance vMotion. What's the use case? Is it avoidance for? Disaster or yeah. So every, everyone talks about disaster recovery. You know, uh, my data center blew up. I need to come back up and running. Disaster avoidance is I have a hurricane coming, but it won't be here for four days. Let me move all of my VMs from my Houston office up to my Dallas office, right? So you can move those VMs uh, up to a 100 millisecond round trip time. Okay, and it, it used to be. 10 or 20 milliseconds, but it increased to 100 milliseconds now? Yeah, I mean, you're going to need a big pipe because you're moving a lot of data, but yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot that, it, I see a lot of interest in this, especially being able to push VMs, like we push the content library out to a remote site, we could do, build all the VMs for a remote site and push those out 
to a remote site. So that could be a good SRM. use case. So SRM would still manage a disaster recovery scenario, but um, being able to, you know, one onesie twosie or more push VMs out to a remote site is really handy for VI admins. I, I think people are talking about this for years, the, the whole follow the moon concept that you can migrate machines to another part of the world where maybe the power is, is more cheap. Yeah, so uh, I guess they, they call that following following the sun, yeah. being able to move things around. Uh, I'm waiting for interplanetary V-Motion, but uh, we just have to get Project Wormhole fixed. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, great, cool. There he goes from one side to the other with 100 milliseconds of round trip time. The vSphere web client, I hear people complain about the web client a lot. Me as an instructor, I get students who have to cope with sometimes a bit sloggy web client. Are there any improvements? Sure, uh, a lot of improvements are here. We have uh, gone through the web client soup to nuts. It's still flex based but we've optimized it. Uh, we've optimized a lot of the, the workflows. We've optimized the response time significantly. I played around with an early beta uh, about a month or two ago, and I was amazed. I was like, I need this right now, right? We also changed the layout. So the C-sharp client, which we're going to continue uh, supplying, and we've updated it to be able to manage those VMware version 10. Uh, that was a big, big pushback on us. We're going to keep that around for things like VOM and, and such. Um, and that is renamed the host client, so that's great for managing that single host. But once you get into vCenter, we've changed the look and feel of the web client to more closely match the C-sharp client. Yeah, making pe a People were searching a lot uh, for VM settings, yeah, host settings. There was a lot of hunting and pecking and frustration. So now you'll be able to see, like say for example, the recent tasks are now along the bottom, just like in the C-sharp client. And with the response time much better, it'll feel a lot more like a native app. I think people will be really happy. Right, right, and, and, and fewer clicks. Yeah, so for example, the home icon, uh, in that particular demo, you know, that used to just bring you home to the home page. Now it gives you a menu of all the places that you want to go, and it's much more responsive. Awesome, awesome, cool, man. Fault tolerance enhancements. I've seen some technology previews. I think it was in Copenhagen, and people were showing multiple CPUs. Is it really effect now? Is it really working? It sure is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, the final numbers of how many CPUs and, and so forth, that'll all be announced closer to release, but what we're showing is the technology, the fact that you can create a VM with multiple CPUs and with a simple right click turn it into a fault tolerant VM. That's really big for a lot of folks. One, one CPU wasn't enough for some workloads. Uh, multiple CPUs, that's going to be really cool. So the use case could be an application that is a bit outdated, not cluster aware, and you still want to create high availability. It's written by the son of the CEO, and <laughs> it's running for years, and it's on old hardware, but you want to move it to a VM, and full tolerance, full tolerance cake can make it even more available. Exactly, so you, know, you have instantaneous failover, and you, know, you think about managing all the instructions for one CPU and then duplicating them on the secondary, uh, VM. Now you're doing that for multiple CPUs and the the memory and the bus, uh, the you know the imagined front side bus, all of that sort of stuff. We've really done a, a lot of work on this to make that instantaneous failover retained, which is what people expect from fault tolerance. Right, right. So because the lag time must be minimal, uh, otherwise people will experience uh, a, a lag behind. Is it still possible to monitor the lag time if the host, for instance, is too busy that you can see that the machine is falling behind? Um, I, do, I don't know that detail myself because I haven't played with that, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you can do it today, you can do it tomorrow. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, cool. That's it. So like I said, if you want, sign up on the vSphere beta program, try out some of these features, and uh, you know, let us know what you think. Okay, many thanks, will do. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you.